Is synthetic meat the food of the future? That's what we're going to find out in this new video. Cultured meat, in vitro meat, clean meat, or synthetic meat are all names for meat produced in a laboratory. This new form of meat first appeared in 2013. The first hamburger based on cultured food was tasted in London. It was created from scratch by Mark Frost, a professor at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. The experiment cost some 290,000 euros in research. Since then, the utopia of animal-free and much more environmentally friendly meat consumption has seduced many industries. Nevertheless, it was in 2018 that the project really saw the light of day. A regulatory framework was then established, and the marketing of these products gradually opened up. Some of the biggest names in the food industry got involved. Startups were created to promote this new way of eating. The aim is to develop a highly promising market at a particularly affordable price. All meats are concerned. Beef, poultry, duck, etc. Can we really talk about a food revolution? To begin with, let's look at how synthetic meat is created. How is this project taking root in our eating habits? In general terms, this involves multiplying stem cells taken from muscle tissue. They are then placed in a suitable culture medium. More precisely, it all begins with a form of isolation. A small number of muscle satellite cells are harvested from the muscles of an adult animal. These cells are involved in the regeneration process of the muscle itself. At this stage of the experiment, they are still considered to be stem cells, capable of multiplying. Under the influence of certain hormonal factors, they transform into muscle cells. These cells are cultivated in bioreactors. These are sterile chambers containing liquid nutrients. Stimulated by growth factors, they continue to proliferate. They are then mechanically assembled into consumable muscle tissue. We are thus witnessing the birth of artificial meat. Is it possible to make the case for healthy, sustainable meat? Opinions differ on this point. The Dutch company Mosa Meat, founded by Mark Post, the founder of Synthetic Meat, sees nothing but advantages in this development. The company is adamant that this new way of eating is a solution to a whole host of problems. Indeed, if we follow this ideology, the environmental impact of meat production should be drastically reduced. What's more, the risk of infectious diseases being transmitted from animals to humans is close to zero. The taste of synthetic meat also approaches that of traditional meat, a real plus for beef lovers. Take Upside Foods for example. Its main objective is to create meat from animal cells. The process may be different, but the meat remains the same. In November 2021, this meat production plant opened its doors in the heart of California. Upside Foods creates its meat from animal muscle cells. These are harvested from healthy, living cattle. It is also conceivable that the company will work with recently slaughtered animals for food purposes only. Upside Foods' ultimate goal is ambitious, but, as you know, quality comes at a price. In the mind of this research group, cells will eventually self-renew. In the future, no more animals should be included in this production chain. Once the cells have been harvested from the sterilized egg of a hand-picked animal, they are nourished in the most natural environment possible, with a wide range of micronutrients. The Upside Foods laboratory houses large tanks known as cultivators. The cells are placed inside to grow and develop as they please. After a fortnight, the meat is harvested for inspection and preparation. It's clear that the population is constantly growing. Certainly, some eating habits are evolving. Vegetarianism, veganism, and many other derivatives of these practices are experiencing a veritable golden age. Yet, meat remains the most popular food in many households. Unfortunately, resources are dwindling. So, we're gonna have to produce more food, with fewer resources. As a result, techniques and development approaches must evolve. In this way, cultured meat can become a sustainable solution. Naturally, the plant works on a wide variety of products, from beef to duck and seafood, enough to appeal to a wide range of consumers. However, one question remains. Is this food really good for your health? The real impact of large-scale synthetic meat production raises a number of issues. For some, synthetic meat is a pipe dream. Apart from reducing our excessive meat consumption, no other solution seems conceivable. It's seen as tasting the flesh of a dead animal. Admittedly, it's not very appetizing. For others, it's just a continuation of the industrialization of food. Diets are evolving as they always have. 
Some still can't imagine replacing the product of a peasant farm with a cell culture in the laboratory. Farming is already in a very bad way, so why give them the coup de grace by relegating their production to the background? According to certain studies, it would appear that the environmental impact of synthetic meat is greater in the long term than that of traditional meat. The nature of the gases emitted and the cost of the infrastructure required for production appears to be higher. What's more, cell cultures clearly lack the immune system of animals. In a nutrient-rich environment, bacteria are much more likely to multiply. Cultures must be carried out under highly sterile conditions to avoid contamination. The use of single-use plastic equipment is very common, to guarantee flawless sterility. While the risk of contamination is reduced, pollution is not. As we all know, excessive use of plastic is far from being a viable solution for the environment. As far as animals are concerned, muscle volume grows slowly and cells multiply very little. In the case of synthetic meat production, to obtain in a few weeks what the animal takes several years to produce, is necessary to develop continuous stimulation. Muscle satellite cells are stimulated by growth factors, such as anabolic sex hormones. Present in animals, humans, and traditional meat, they stimulate protein synthesis in the cells. Unfortunately, overexposure to these hormones has been banned in Europe since 1981. It is therefore essential that their concentration is not too high in so-called in vitro meat. It's also worth pointing out that if livestock farming dies out, we humans will be deprived of a natural resource. The polls are clear. Many are willing to taste synthetic meat, but few are prepared to eat it regularly. If we take the example of upside foods, a major milestone has just been reached. It has just obtained the green light from the Food and Drug Administration to manufacture synthetic meat, in particular chicken. Admittedly, this meat is not yet sold on supermarket shelves, but this breakthrough is very promising. The market for plant-based substitutes is already largely commercialized, so why not give real meat production a chance without breeding, slaughtering, or laboratory development? Despite many detractors, synthetic meat producers are optimistic about the future. It would appear that conventional meat production accounts for a considerable proportion of greenhouse gas emissions, as well as global energy consumption. Can synthetic meat reduce these problems? Opinions are divided on the subject. However, this alternative meat production will have to conquer the world market by becoming a particularly competitive product, especially in terms of the price. It's true that excessive meat consumption is detrimental to both the environment and people's health. Yet, many choose to ignore these findings and refuse to change their eating habits. If we are to move towards a healthy, sustainable diet, we may need to educate people's consciences about food. So, synthetic meat still has a long way to go. Farmed meat doesn't seem ready to give up its place. So what does the future hold for this new synthetic food? Will our eating habits evolve in the right direction? Don't hesitate to give us your opinion by leaving us a comment below. We look forward to hearing from you. See you soon on ATEC.